Hi, welcome to this particular tutorial where I'm going to show you how we can convert a polar equation of a curve, and I've got three examples here, into Cartesian equations of curves. And to do this, we should be familiar with the connection between Cartesian coordinates x, y, and polar coordinates r, theta. So if we've got a point here, say we call it P, then R is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. That's essentially Pythagoras' theorem. And by trigonometry, the cosine of the angle theta compares the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So that would be cos theta is equal to x over R. And also the sine of angle theta compares the opposite side to the hypotenuse, so that will be y over r. Now, using these equations, which are number one, two, and three, we can take our polar equations and convert them to Cartesian form. Now, I've picked three examples that we'll work through, and for the first example, this is a nice easy one, r equals 4. In fact, for r equaling 4, if we were to draw Cartesian axes, then we've got essentially the distance from the origin to, say, any point is going to be 4 units. Now, this point here could be anywhere four units away from the origin. So that would be a circle if we looked at it in the xy plane. So what this generates is a circle of radius four with the center at the origin here. But to convert it to Cartesian form, we know that r is equal to the root of x squared plus y squared. So therefore, if we just say from 1, okay, from 1, what we've got is that, therefore, the root of x squared plus y squared equals 4. And I could leave it like that, or I could square both sides. And if I square both sides, I've got x squared plus y squared equals 16. And you should recognize this as the equation, the Cartesian equation of a circle, center naught naught, the origin, and a radius equal to the square root of 16, which would be 4. Now, in later tutorials, what I'll do is I'll show you how we can go about sketching curves like these, okay? But for now, what we'll do is just form the Cartesian equation. So for number two, okay, what we've got to look at then is r squared equals cosine of two theta. And it's valid for theta greater than zero, but less than pi upon four radians. And the reason for this is that the cosine of two theta would always be a positive value which would be consistent with the fact that r squared would always have to be a positive value. So how do we go about changing this then into Cartesian form? Well, what I need to do is re-express cosine of 2 theta in terms of, say, cos theta, sine theta, or both. And cosine of 2 theta is an identity that you should be familiar with. And that is that it is equal to cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Now, it's not the only identity. You could have the identity which is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Okay. Or you could have the identity 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Any one of these would do. Now, I'm not going to work with all three, okay? I'm only just going to pick one of them to work with. And what I would suggest you do is you work with these two, 
I'll take you through this one, which I've labeled A. But as I say, it should equally work with the other two. And I'd encourage you to have a go at this. So what I'm going to do is take from two and three, from two and three, I'm going to substitute these into A. So I'll just say sub in A, okay? And if I do that, what we've got then is that R squared, let's just say therefore R squared, is going to equal cos squared theta. Now cos theta is x over r, so if I square that, it's going to be x squared over r squared. And then we've got minus sine squared theta, so that's going to be minus y squared over r squared. All right, y squared over r squared. And from this, what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by r squared. And so therefore, what we get is r squared multiplied by another r squared is r to the power 4. And that leaves me just with x squared minus y squared. Now, what I notice is that from 1, we know that r is equal to the root of x squared plus y squared. So if I squared that, r squared would be x squared plus y squared. And if I square it again, I get r to the power 4 which is going to be x squared plus y squared, all squared. So from 1, let's just put this down, from 1, what I end up with is therefore x squared plus y squared, all squared, that's r to the 4 then, equals x squared minus y squared. Now, this is the Cartesian equation then. You could leave it like this. You could possibly expand this if you wanted to, but this looks fairly compact at the moment. But if you were to try and sketch this curve or plot this curve, it's not going to be impossible, but it is quite difficult, as you'll see later, to sketching this version of it, r squared equals cos 2 theta. Okay, well, let's move on to three, or at this point, you might decide that you want to have a go. So we'll just come down this column here, okay? Now for part three, r equals three minus sine two theta. I don't have to uh, put a range on theta for this one because the sine of two theta for any value of theta would always be a value between minus 1 and 1, inclusive. And so if we were to do 3 minus any value between minus 1 and 1, then r would always be a positive value. Okay, so I don't need to put any range on this. So how do I turn this to a Cartesian form? Well, we know what r is. It's the root of x squared plus y squared. We've just got to work on sine 2 theta. And this again is where you have to be good at remembering your identities. So we'll just say here now sine 2 theta. What's that going to be identical to? Well, it's identical to 2 sine theta cos theta. All right, an identity you should be familiar with. Now I've got sine theta and cos theta from these values up here. So we can say that then this is equal to 2 multiplied by sine theta, which is y divided by r, and that's multiplied by cos theta, which is x over r. And so I got these results, let's just make a note of it here, from 2 and 3, okay? So where does that take us? Well, we can simplify this. This is going to equal 2. Instead of writing yx, I'm going to write 2xy, and it's divided by r squared. So all I need to do is substitute this result into this one up here. Let's call this b now, OK? So we'll just say sub in b. And if we substitute this in b, then we therefore have that r, okay, is equal to 3 
minus the sine of 2 theta, which we've seen is 2xy over r squared. Now what I'm going to do next is just multiply throughout by r squared to get rid of that fraction there. So r times r squared is going to be r cubed. And then we've got 3 times r squared, 3r squared. And then when we multiply this last term by r squared, we just end up with the 2xy. Now what I'm going to do is just simply substitute for r. And we can do that from equation 1 up here. So if we do that, we've got r cubed. Well, r is going to be x squared plus y squared all to the power half. And if we cube that, we end up with x squared plus y squared all to the power 3 over 2. OK? And then we've got equals 3r squared. So that's going to be 3 multiplied by x squared plus y squared for r squared, OK? And then we've got minus 2xy. So we have our Cartesian equation. And again, you can see that if we had to sketch or plot this graph, it's quite complex by comparison to what we have here. OK, well, I hope that's given you some idea anyway of converting polar equations of curves to their corresponding Cartesian equations.